Hi everybody, today at Marcel's Hockey School we'll be talking about hockey skating, skating fast. What matters, what doesn't matter. Because this has been a topic that's gotten more and more confusing over the last years. A lot of really technical lingo is being thrown around by a lot of coaches. You want to skate like McDavid, you want to skate like Matt, Bar Matt Barzell, you want to skate like someone else. Well, I have news for you, everybody's unique. Everybody has their own skating style. And I'm really here to take a little bit from all these best players and maximize your skating style. And I'm gonna tell you in this video what matters, what doesn't matter, and I'm gonna to try to take all the complicated stuff out of skating fast. So let's get started. So power skating's changed a lot since I was taking power skating courses as a kid or during my pro career. And the first thing we're gonna talk about, we're gonna do a top-down approach. So we'll be talking about our arm swing. Now, when I was learning power skating, they would tell us you have to swing your arms completely forward. So it kind of looked like this. The idea behind that did make some sense. In general, we want to be going straight forward, so it sort of makes sense that our arms are being swung straight forward. The only problem with that is, this is absolutely not a natural movement at all. If we're running in shoes, then of course, our feet are going directly backwards, so our arms are a counter movement, so they'll be going forwards, but when we're skating, our legs are going out to the side, so it's very unnatural to be pumping the arms forwards. Your leg movement is what's gonna define your arm movement, not the other way around, okay? So it's totally fine to have your arms going to the side, and I wouldn't really be concentrating on this too much when you're skating. So if your stride looks like this, is that as good as? Danke. My kids, who I coach, are just watching me. They're just practicing on the outer end. I'm getting a little bit of free ice right now. They said I look pretty good. So if your stride looks like this, that's totally fine. The only time I'd really ever intervene with somebody's arm swing, and there are a few occasions, is when somebody is skating like this. I'll just do a couple steps. Skating like this. That may also be coming from the legs, but doing this, with the arm string is not good at all, or doing this. I do have, I have had a couple of kids come to me for private lessons who sort of skate like this. Now, if you're not moving your arms at all, this is a problem because you do generate power from your arms. So you do need to be swinging the arms. But the arms are going to bow and go across your body. And if they're going sort of like this, maybe a tad straighter, maybe a little bit more to the side. I don't have a problem with that. All you gotta watch out for is this and not swing your arms at all. So that's arm swing. So the next thing we're gonna be talking about is body lean. So when I was taking power skating courses and I went to a really, really good power skating school for its time, they told us forward body lean should be about 52 degrees. So I, I'm thinking this is probably about 45 and 52 might be somewhere around here. I'm not sure. I don't have a compass to measure myself in real time. And that made sense. I have my weight forward, which I want, but I still have my chest up, can see the play, can control the play. I don't have my head down. And that sounded pretty good. But now I've been watching more and more high level players, more NHLers. I believe in comparison to the past, most players now have more forward body lean than usual. So I think if you go a little bit lower, I don't really want to put a precise angle on it, but more like 45 like I used to have, and they always told me we'll go back up to 52. I think more 45 is going to be good because the more weight you have over your quad muscles, like even just like this, I'm going to glide forward ever so slightly if I'm leaning forward. It shouldn't be confused with this though. That's not forward body lean, that's just poor posture so we're leaning forward from the hips sort of like this and I can get a lot of weight over my legs so looks like this nice forward lean I feel it allows me also to get deeper in my stance and I have a lot of power you do need to be careful though don't overdo it 
some coaches now prescribing to go really wide forward. It kind of looks like this. First of all, when I do that, I actually feel that my feet are slipping out from behind. Second of all, this may be fine and dandy for some players skating with a puck. Well, we have a puck when we play hockey, and I cannot skate with my upper body that far forward. I'm going to get killed. So that's way too much. The other problem with that body lean is that if my upper body goes way forward, my leg is gonna come way up. My leg comes up, it takes more time to get back down onto the ice. The more time it takes to get back down on the ice, the more time I have in between strides, the slower I'm gonna be. So I think 52 degrees, like they used to tell me, is a little bit too upright. I go around 45, but not down here. So next point, let's talk about stride length. Now when I was learning power skating, they always told us really, really long strides, okay? So it would sort of look like this, my legs would come back on the recovery past the middle axis of my body. It would look like this. And this is pretty much what every power skating coach in the 90s, early 2000s would be telling you how to skate until players like McDavid, like Matt Barzell, came along and started doing shorter strides and we're still blazing fast. So does this matter? Does it not matter? Do we, should we be doing completely short strides now? Like a lot of power skating coaches advocate. This is a point where I really think your own individual style is important here. Really whatever works for you. There were amazing skaters like Scott Niedermeyer with really, really long, smooth strides. You couldn't take a Scott Niedermeyer and tell him, hey Scott, you gotta skate really short strides, just as you could not take Matt Barzell and tell him to do really smooth long strides. A guy like Dylan Larkin in the NHL won the fastest skating competition a few years ago, has quite a long stride. Obviously, he's very fast. Other players aren't. So just think in your head, if you do take shorter strides, they have to be faster because the stride is not as long. So I have to take more than if I would be taking a long, powerful stride. With a long, powerful stride, it's probably not as, you won't be able to take as many strides in the same amount of time as a shorter stride. I coached with a guy a few years ago at a camp. His skating stride looked horrible. It looked like this. I don't know how he did it, but he was amazingly fast. This was a guy where if I was looking for aesthetics, what I would say, hey, this is a no-go, but he was really fast. So in this case, just think about it. Longer stride needs more power. You'll have a less stride frequency, shorter stride. You just have to move your legs a little bit of power. This is just an individual preference. My honest opinion is still that a longer stride is a little bit more efficient because you won't get as tired doing a long, smooth stride than short strides. But it's also a little bit game dependent and there'll be situations in this game where you have to use a short stride. So really here, not short stride is better, not long stride is better. Do what works for you. Next point, push off angle. Should we be going more back? Should we be going more to the side? So my recommendation is more to the side. And this is, I'm gonna sound like a broken record here though. Everybody's a little different. So I think if I can push off more to the side, my forward momentum is gonna bring my blade to the back a little bit anyways. If I can push off to the side, I'll be able to grip the ice more than I have to push back. The problem with a lot of players who try to push directly back is that they get a little a blade slippage. However, there's examples of players who push out more to the back. Dylan Larkin, like I just mentioned, and is, is an example. He pushes more to the back and he gets a lot of power out of that, obviously. So what do you have to do if you're one of those players who pushes out more to the back? It's pretty simple. You have to have very good external hip rotation. So if I'm able to rotate my hips 
I mean, obviously this is kind of weird for me because it's not how I skate. But if I'm able to rotate my hips out a lot, then I will be able to grip the ice a lot this way. It's all about gripping the ice. What angle you push off at doesn't really matter as long as you have good grip. So most players are gonna have better grip pushing off to the side, and I'm one of them. They would tell us, and I agree with this point, they would tell us way back in power skating, push off at 30 degree angle, so then at the end, your blade, due to your forward momentum, is gonna come out at a 45 degree angle. And this makes a lot of sense to me, because if you push out at a 45 degree angle, let's see what's 45, that's probably 45. Then at the end of my stride, I'm gonna be back here and I'm gonna slip out. So most players push out to the side because otherwise this is gonna happen. No grip. But if you are a player with very good external rotation and you are a player who pushes out to the back too far, then just concentrate on really turning out the hip and then you'll be able to grip the ice very well. So now we'll compare Dylan Larkin, who actually holds the record in the NHL fastest skater competition, and Connor McDavid, who we also know is blazingly fast. And just to prove that two different skating styles can both be very effective, Larkin, in my opinion, has a longer stride. He also pushes more directly to the back. Also actually slip there and still set the record, which is quite impressive. And now we come to McDavid with a faster turnover, but a little bit of a shorter choppier stride i think he also has a little bit more forward lean than larkin although both do have a very good forward lean and um mcdavid just a tick slower than larkin here but both obviously very fast we'll stick to a slow motion here of mcdavid's stride and we see his heel is coming up a fair bit that probably costs him a little bit more time in comparison to Larkin whose heels stay closer to the ice a lot of forward lean here maybe almost too much but obviously he's reaching for the line and Larkin here you see the heels staying closer to the ice I think the upper body is a little bit more upright but still a nice forward bend at the hips and the feet definitely going further backwards not to the side and now here in a screenshot you can see that both skaters have Excellent leg extension, no leg extension, you'll never be able to skate fast, and great knee bend. Larkin is pushing a little bit further back than McDavid, McDavid more to the side, Larkin's upper body is a little bit more upright, McDavid is a little bit more bent forward, so you can skate differently and still be very fast, but a couple things have to always stay the same, your knee bend, your stride extension, they always have to be great. And I couldn't really get the perfect screenshot here, but as I mentioned in the clips, I do feel that Larkin is bringing his legs more toward in towards the middle of his body. McDavid is wide tracking a little bit more, but I really mean a little bit more. None of these two are skating really, really wide legged. Their legs are coming in, just Larkin's legs are coming in a little bit further. He has a slightly longer stride. McDavid's stride is shorter, but he has a faster leg turnover. So you're probably thinking to yourself, Marcel has said, this doesn't matter, that doesn't matter, that doesn't matter, do your own thing. Well, why do we even have coaches? Or what, what's the big deal here? I could just do whatever I want and skate well? No. There is one point that you have to do in order to skate fast, and that is get low. If you do not get low, you will not be able to skate fast. Doesn't matter any of the other points that I just talked about it. Now, a lot of coaches Nowadays, they're getting really technical. They say it's not bending your knees, which I tell my kids, bend your knees, get low. It's about shin angle. And they are in theory correct because it's actually my angle here that matters because I could have a shin angle like this. I'm sitting too far back. I'm low, my knees are bent, but I am sitting too far back. And so I will not have the power I need. I need to get low forward like this, have good shin angle. But if I would try to explain to the kids I'm coaching about shin angle, they will be giving me blank stares. I find in general, if I tell them, get low, bend your knees, they understand and do it automatically properly. So I'm gonna keep doing that for you in my videos, not talk about shin angle. I am gonna be talking about getting low and bending those knees, and then you will be skating well. It's just so simple. When I get low, maybe not 90 degrees, that's too much. Just above 90 degrees, I have more power. I have a longer stride, then if I'm higher up, if I'm higher up, my stride goes to here. If I get low, my stride goes to here. It's pretty simple. 
longer stride, deeper in a crouch, automatically more power. Longer stride and more power just from getting low. You really, you've already won. So don't be thinking that I don't give a hoot about how you're skating, anything. I think everybody's a little different, but if you don't get low, you won't skate fast. And that is the number one thing we coach all of our players to do. Every camp I run, first thing we work on, we do not want anybody skating like this. We want you skating like this. And then everything else will fall into place. Your crossovers, your tight turns, your forward strides. Backwards is gonna be a little bit different because you do not want much shin angle when skating backwards. You actually wanna be get low and sitting on a toilet seat, so sitting more back to have more power. But that's a topic for a completely different video. So yes, one thing is super important, get low. So I don't wanna take any responsibility away from me here and say like, well, this doesn't matter, that doesn't matter, nothing matters. But it's been really irritating for me in the last few years, player coaches saying, you have to skate like this guy, you have to skate like that guy. We have to take into account that everybody's different and everybody has a little bit of their own unique style. And whatever style that is, we need to maximize it. The one most important point is getting low. But if you have shorter strides, then you just have to make them faster. If you have longer strides, make sure they're really long and really powerful, and they are actually long. Leaning forward, very important. If you're at 42 degrees, 45 degrees, 47 degrees, I don't know. Just make sure you're leaning forward and you do have weight over your legs and that your head is up. And if you are one of those players who not like I recommend, push more far back, then rotate your hips more out. These are ways to make your style really fast. And that's what I'm here to help you with, help to make your style really fast and not say, you have to skate like this in order to skate fast. So I hope this video was helpful. I hope this video took a little bit of the confusion out of skating fast away. Hope you now know what to work on, now know what to look out for. Don't be caught in one specific mold. Be unique, be yourself, be fast. Have fun out there and see you next time at Marcel's Hockey School.